This week, episode 288, we interview Brendan from Industrial Cigar Company. And if you follow episode 285, Brendan comes away by a referral from a Stogie Geeks listener. Tells you the power of this podcast, as well as other podcasts as well here. We are here for you. Uh, We'll give a shout out to the listener who is responsible for this interview. We're going to talk... Uh, some interesting topics. Cigars is one of them. Shop exclusives is one of them. And we're going to break open and think outside the box right here on this edition of The Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. A Vintner Cigar Club located in Warwick, Rhode Island. It's a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to episode 288. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa. You are listening to Stogie Geeks. For all things this show, visit stogiegeeks.com. Click on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Instagram. It'd be awesome to catch up with you. Any emails you have for the interview, you can... uh, Dump us a message on the Facebook Live for right now, or you can email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. I want to welcome Brandon from Industrial Cigar Company way out and down south in Texas. Brandon, how are you? I'm doing good. Hey, thank you very much for having me. Uh, yeah, a couple of programming notes. I want to introduce uh, the listeners to let them know, because uh, sometimes I, I, I get listener emails um, all the time. And they, you know, uh, the ones that have emailed me during the month of September, uh, there was about a month delay because I had the birth of my firstborn son, right? It, or my firstborn child, for that matter. And so I, I, I was literally, like, responding back to people as of yesterday. And then uh, Brian, uh, who is a member of your shop, uh, had emailed me um, because on episode 285 of Stogie Geeks, and by the way, you can get all of the show notes for every episode. All you got to do is go to stogiegeeks.com, for example. This is episode 288, so you go to sto- stogiegeeks.com forward slash 288. You get the notes for the show if you go to episode 285. And I had did a call for shop exclusives. And what happened was, I guess one of your members, his name was uh, Brian, introduced your shop and obviously his home base shop. uh, And he was a member of a shop exclusive that you have at Industrial Cigar Company. So again, if I do an APB for stuff, uh, Stogie Geeks listeners, if I owe you any emails and it was during September, I apologize in advance. I think I'm almost all caught up with that stuff but my email is joeh at stogiegeeks.com so anyway uh brandon your uh member of your shop introduced us that's it yeah that's uh brian burnett is his name and yep. he's been he's actually been a member since the beginning now, mm. i say the beginning it's only been a year so it's not like we have this um decade of history being a shop but he pulled me aside and he's a, a very avid listener of yourself and of your show And he basically said, hey, look, I'm all about the shop exclusive. These guys are all about cigars. They know what they're talking about. So let's let's see what we can do to to get you in front of them and talk to it. And then I just you need to try this stuff. So I need to send you some so you can talk through it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can uh, give you my, our address uh, offline or, or via email, right? And, and 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 go forth from there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, before we get to that, I want to take some time out and talk to you because what what when we had the chance to do a briefing, you had brought up a bunch of interesting topics that I think, and I know based upon either surveys or the emails that I get. That the, what makes Stogie Geeks different from other podcasts that are out there is that it's an inclusive culture of the listeners 
And the listeners really have a chance to either participate in the show. We've had some emails. I would love to do in the future a kind of uh, different regional hotspots like take a listener from Atlanta, Georgia, take a listener from Texas, take a listener from the Northeast and, and kind of get their opinions as to some of the other uh, sticks that they like and kind of do an online collaboration. I'm working on the logistics of that. We can certainly handle it from a technology standpoint. It's just I want to kind of keep the topic so that it's not a bunch of ranting. You know what I mean? So that yeah. li- because when when we do our uh, survey and when we do our downloads, it the it is a mix of half and half who just listen to the audio version as well as some people who do catch the uh, video version. So I kind of want to accommodate the uh, both audiences. But but you had brought up a topic, and I'm gonna jump around here um, from the topics that we had brought up. You had talked to me about your family and how your family wanted and how you got into the cigar business. So we're going to spend some some time on that. But before we get there, one of the things that I was fascinated about is I had given you the introduction to Stogie Geeks, and we had talked about the metamorphosis of change that the show has gone because like any type of um, business or uh, podcast or product, when it withstands the test of time it goes through its changes and we had talked about rap, rapper binder filler and then one of the things that you struck a chord with me is you said well you know really what does that mean and then you actually ex- take the time out to explain to you not only your members but your customers and stuff like that so let, why don't we start there and then we'll get a little bit into your business yeah i think that's a i think it's a very good place to start and and i think I think it echoes on what you're doing and what we look to do is we look to provide an experience and it really blossomed that idea of wrapper binder filler. Well, what's it mean? It blossomed. The idea really started at IPCPR a couple years ago when we were kind of getting into the final stages of planning and we were talking with manufacturers and they said, well, it's got a Nicaraguan wrapper, Dominican filler. And they talked through it. And they, you know, they finish it with, it's got this wrapper binder filler and it's $8 on the shelf. And we thought, well, what the hell does that even mean? You know, what, <laughs> what should I take from this? Sure. And, you know, we, we kind of, I think after enough, you know, we, we've been smoking cigars for, oh, I'd say a decade together as a family. I don't know, think we knew what the hell any of it me- really meant. So when we finally sat down with a few people and developed these good relationships, we thought, okay, well, not only do we need to educate our our clients, we need to educate ourselves. So we focus on that a lot in working with manufacturers and blenders who, who can teach us, okay, this is what you'll get out of wrapper. This is why we use it from this area. This is why we use this binder and filler. And these are the different techniques that we really blend to make this come to life. And, and so instead of doing just simple cut and lights, you know, and I don't necessarily want to pimp the shop too much, but to pimp kind of it. give you our, <laughs> our scope at it, Maybe we'll pimp it, but it'll, it will come in due time. But what we like to focus on is splitting those elements up. Mm. And, you know, I don't know your take and I'd love to get your feedback on, you know, is there a certain way, you know, that, that you break down a cigar, you focusing on it from, you know, I like this wrapper element of it. I like the taste that I'm getting from the wrapper, or are you looking at it from a whole perspective because what we do is we especially like with the shop exclusive we'll bring all of the different tobaccos in and just make little halochos and test just the wrapper just the binder just the filler in the in the rice so people can actually taste that and see what they get out of a san andreas versus a jalapa valley uh, tobacco Mm -hmm. so is there something that that you do um, and really could help me when you're looking at wrapper binder filler what's most important to you Mm. It's actually a great question, and, you know, uh, full disclosure for the listeners, I had never met Brendan just via email and via a a referral from one of his members of his shop who happens to listen to the show if you're just tuning in. And, you know, you're the first person that 
I've had the opportunity to interview since January 2nd, 2017, not that I'm counting, here on Stogie Geeks. And I've been interviewing people in the cigar industry since 2014. When pre-Stogie Geeks, I used to have a radio show here in the province metro called Cigar Club Radio. And no one's ever asked me, like, you know, you talk about all these reviews and you talk about how you like a cigar and what you like about a cigar. What the hell does that stuff mean to you? Like, no one has ever asked me that question. And when you asked me that question on our briefing, because when I had first wanted to call you, I was like, oh, we're going to talk about the shop exclusive. We're going to we're gonna talk about the shop. We're going we're, we're gonna to talk about how you guys merged with uh, Casa Torrent to, 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 to get the shop exclusive. And then you kind of, like, spun it on me. And you were like, well, what does all this mean to you? So, first of all, hats off, because you're, like, the first person to ever say, wow. Like, wh what does that mean? And to answer the question, when I came on Stogie Geeks, they had a existing uh, methodology for ra rating cigars, right? It goes from uh, lawn mulch to uh, angler. So lawn mulch, you put underneath the lawn mulch, it's terrible, it makes great fertilizer. Angler, my opinion, throw it off a boat because it sucks. Um, you know, try one, uh, Fiverr. Uh, box split, box split with a friend, which I really, really use a lot. Uh, they have box worthy. They have fight Chuck Norris for it in Oasis. That had come from all the hosts pre m m me being here, so I kind of adapted to that. But what I tell people, because I get bombarded with questions, like uh, especially, especially within the Stoey Geek space. As opposed to the Cigar Club radio space. Because the Cigar Club radio space, my listeners were uh, basically just Providence Metro. It wasn't podcast. It was on AM radio. People called in from all the local Rhode Island shops. So it had like a local Rhode Island feel. Um, and that was kind of it. And um, when I came to Stogie Geeks, we get kind of two types of listeners, right? We get listeners that... I call La Bodegas, which is garage guys who do not go to the retail shops. They buy online and they box split with a friend or the, the, their friends all go spl split a box and, and get together on a Friday night and play cards and all that. And then I get other listeners who frequent shops. And then I get other listeners who kind of like treasure hunt for sure right like they you know they they want they want those unicorn cigars they ask me for a list of what the unicorns so we get all these bunch of different listeners and i can usually tell because they all ask what do you think of this cigar and as soon as they post it i'm like oh that's an online solution that that's this that's that so i kind of put them in those little buckets and then i try the cigar and then i explain to them and then i always try to get them at the end of my conversations personally, is to cross. So in other words, if someone gave me a, um, I know it's available online, I'm not going to throw any brands underneath the bus, but you know that they bought this brand online, mm -hmm. right? I always tell them, you know, have you ever visited your, your local shop, you know? Um, or, you know, have you ever had the opportunity to, and like, no, we, we just smoke cigars in our garage, I have conversations that go on and on. And so I always try to get them to, to kind of cross. That's number one, because I do think that from a cigar enthusiast or cigar connoisseur or whatever stamp you want to put on yourself, however you enjoy cigars, I think you need to do that with more than one outlet. That's number one. Number two, how I rate cigars is what the hell you can do with the cigar first, right? Can I golf with it? Can I fish with it? Can, mm -hmm. Do I have to sit down? Do I have to sit down in a cigar shop? And always touch it up because the wrapper binder filler sucks or the construction sucks, right? Or is it delicate? Is it a Lancero? Lancero is not really golfable, even though I golf with, with some Lanceros because they, because especially if they have um, the uh, non short fuller, ashy filler in it. And again, different brands now. So, so I base it upon that first. And then how I categorize my ratings is I turn around and say, okay, when I'm giving it a Stogie Geeks rating, right? I've given one Oasis since January of uh, J January of 2017. I think I've given two or three Fight Chuck Norris's on, on that show. Because I, I, I take the ratings very seriously. So I'm known as someone who doesn't like any cigars, right? But no, because I, because I give the Stogie Geeks listener my experience 
of the cigar that I'm smoking and and if I like it. And there are just some brands, there's a lot of them, that I just can't get into. Like I just, <laughs> you know, met the people that awesome. I, I just can't get into. So I'm and I'm very honest with that. So I think that has really because the feedback I'm getting from listeners is, hey, you know, I love your reviews because they're exactly how you describe them. Like, you know, because there are some things like, eh, it's okay, I'll give it a fiver, but, you know, you know, split it with but, friends, you know. <laughs> so I'm, like, even taking the rating and saying, like, really, I would buy one just to, like, try it, but I don't want to give it a try one. And it has nothing to do with sponsors of the show, has nothing to do with any of that, because uh, even though I'm involved in that personally, where I go out and I do solicit for the sponsors, for the Story Geeks and the show and all that stuff, I, I just tell them. And, 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 and I've had... Some sponsors say, like, we're not sponsoring your show and, and because we just don't like the way that, that you are with our brand. And I says, well, that's cool. I was like, you know, it, it, you know that's why your brand sits, sits on the shelf. What are you going to do? You know? So I think to wrap it up is always try to be honest and always try to articulate what you're actually feeling. And it's amazing when I speak to... Stogie Geeks listeners or uh, brand owners, you know, sometimes when they're in studio, we have a, we have the luxury of next door is the Havana Cigar Club. So we'll go next door, have a cigar off camera, and, you know, that's where we get all our gossip and blah, 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 and, and everything, and, and find out what's going on in the industry, and have you heard about this company's doing a collaboration with this, and there's, oh, yeah, we've heard that, you know, et cetera. And, I, and, and then when I have their cigar, I'm like, you know, why don't you articulate this what we're feeling here like you know or that and they don't because all they do is say oh yeah it's made in nicaragua and it's uh from the jalapa valley i'm like cool man so what that tells me and this is what i tell listeners all the time is that pay attention to the regions that you like more than the brand name that you like so in other words if you like nicaraguan or dominican you know um Try some other ones from that region as opposed to that brand specific. Yeah, yeah. But you know what, Joe? In all honesty, what I like about what you what you're saying is you you answered the question almost exactly I, how I would. How do you rate your cigars and how do you taste your cigars? Mm. And you are rating it based on your experience mm -hmm. because what I like about that is. And what I relate with is taste is so subjective. Sure. So if somebody says, first off, somebody could give you a, a cigar and say, oh, you're going to taste chocolate notes and then you're going to have some baking spices. And either you're going to do one or two things. One, you go, oh, yeah, I do taste that. Or two, uh, not, uh, really not taste it. Mm -hmm. But I think the experience element is something that can be shared. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and that's where I like where you're talking about the brick and mortar of, of having a rotation, being in the garage and coming into a space because a cigar, I think if we're being honest, the cigar is, it's really kind of the vessel to the experience. Exactly. The cigar, it's, it's part of the experience. It not, is not the experience, mm -hmm. um, you know, in my, in my opinion and the way that I look at it, because the real experience happens with the conversations you can be, that can be had and the relationships that are that are developed, but at the end of the day, I, I like what you say as well as looking at the at the regions and knowing what each region offers. You know, mm -hmm. you can get some of if you're looking at Halap or if you're looking at Dominican stuff or wherever it is. And I know there's a ton of a ton of content and resources to stay educated on regions. I know you guys do a fantastic job of educating there, but but the most important thing about the cigar in all reality and it almost kind of comes back to to what we're or what we talked about in our setup is who you're with right and and it could be that you're with nobody yeah but you're sitting out there and the cigar is the greatest cigar because you got finally nobody can <laughs> sure. i cuss on this show uh, yeah 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 okay yeah you don't have anybody just up your ass yeah like the rest of the yeah day. yeah and, and and you can be real or you can be with family or you can be with friends. And, and to me, that's how I rate a cigar as well is situational. It, it has to do with your experience. 
and and everything that surrounds it. So, you know, I, I dig it. Yeah, sure. Giving a little bit of background to the to, to the listeners, Paul Azadorian, owner of Stogie Geeks, and myself knew of each other from the industry. We've just known each other, and this is when I had Cigar Club Radio. And the first time I sat alone and had a cigar next to Paul Azadorian was at a Jose Blanco event. All right. So Jose Blanco did his blending seminar. I don't know if you ever had one or been to one or whichever. Highly suggest it for sure. Um, I mean, he, he's been he's been, you know, before his long exp- expensive uh, cigar resume and his his knowledge of cigars he spent 30 years in the liquor industry as well. Right. So it's like one of those things where, you know, he has such a, a, a knowledge base of just people. Right. And long story painless, not to spoil it for you, but I guess I am. I'm Italian, right? It is, it is what it is, right? Uh, he said the worst part about it doesn't matter what you like. If you don't like my brands or whatever I'm doing, blah, blah, the worst part about smoking this cigar is next to an asshole. Those are his words. And I was like, this guy's genius. You know what I mean? He's, you know, he's, he's genius. And then I had met Paul, and we had developed a relationship, and I, and, and I ended up getting closer to Stogie Geeks. That was like sep- September of 2016 which led to my coming on board over a january of 2017 and to back that up too i've had the experience he had a personal experience i i i often ask paul like if i ever have a last show i just want notice i promise i won't destroy cameras or anything else like that i just have some things that i want to say and this would probably be one of them that I would say. So hopefully Stogie Geeks episode 600 something or other, right? When I'm older <laughs> and stuff like that, right? Or maybe probably Stogie Geeks episode 1,000. There you go, right? Yeah, just make it 1,000. Keep right, it clean. Right? So, so, you know, uh, where I get the chance to say some stuff. And one of the things I would say is, man, if it's some of the bigger vendors, they ship us and say a interview is about a month out or two weeks out. They ship us the stuff. Sometimes we get some 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 swag, and we try the blends, and we say, okay, we're going to talk about this. Okay, so, okay, cool. And they give us a little cue card of wrap mind the fill of what it is. Thank you very much, and, and away you go. And then I have it. Or it happens the opposite. Because of travels, they come in studio. They give you one, and then when they leave a week later, it comes, you know, a thank you, swag or whatever, come, uh, comes in the mail. And I've had the experience of trying things on both ends where it's like, wow, like, okay, I met the roller of this cigar, like the actual roller, not the rep, not the owner of the company, the roller. And I'm smoking this cigar and I'm like, holy shit, this stuff is awesome, right? And then vice versa, you, the, it, I, I, I try the sample and I'm like, it's all right. You know what I mean? And, and, mm-hmm. and so it really has that effect. And the, my, my point you know, not now I have some like Story Geeks listener to like pull up all the rollers. I'll be getting like like tons of hate email. How can you say that about these guys? Because they would figure it out, right? Of actual rollers who've been on the show to 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 the actual owners versus. And it's one of those things where, you know, it it's it's just proof to the point. I guess it's proof to our point collectively, is that smoking it next to the owner is something that you're not going to get in your garage, right? It, and, and, and smoking I, I it next agree. to the owner. You know, how many cigar shop owners have you come through through your doors so far? And how many more do you have to come? You know what I mean? Who are, who are going to try to come and then go through? And I know it's a lot easier with the, uh, I'm not going to use the B word, right? I, I promised you, right? So I know it's smaller with, with, with the, the smaller um, cigar manufacturers than the ones that have been around forever. Because I'm going to give you the privilege and honor to introduce the new word that we had spoken about, mm-hmm. right? You, oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it, it's your word. I'm not going to take it. You know what I mean? It's your word, and and it was said to me like within the past three interviews, and I says that this is probably the direction that I'm going to go. But I'm not going to take credit for that. I, that's all you. So we can introduce that too coming up in the interview. So now you know, and and I sit there and I'm like, wow, like you know. We have more access to the smaller companies than we do to some of the ones that have been around for a couple of generations. But however, with that being said, um, you know, how many owners come to your shop and how many of your either members or just regular patrons who just light up 
like wow like you know i get a chance to meet the owner and then it's great and it's not like a rock star thing or anything like that it's like wow this guy or gal had taken time out of their schedule to fly here right because if they're not from your hometown right to fly here and be and, and and really um tell the story about his his or her product uh, and I think, Joe, what's what's interesting that, that you say that Mike Rosales is actually sitting, speaking with my dad in the other room. And what is cool about being in a shop, especially a shop that focuses on the smaller companies, those smaller companies and our experience when you get with the right ones is they're very passionate. Mm. And from our perspective, it's just our job to harness that passion and pass it forward. And it's really cool because you get to sit with somebody that runs their cigar business being cigars first and mm-hmm. being about the culture and being about the experience as opposed to you need to buy this much in order to release these products and then you do this. And then it's not a business to them as a business owner. It It's truly about this the the beauty and the passion and the art that goes into the cigar. What you got there? And Roma going craft? into a shop that focuses on those on those smaller brands allows you to connect, I think, more directly with the core of it, where you can be sitting and having a cigar and Mike Rosales walks in or Pete Johnson walks in or somebody mm. comes in and you get to meet the guy you're smoking their cigar with. It tastes and better. Just like what you're saying, you buy in. <laughs> you're right. It totally tastes better. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> And they're like, I don't know what it is. It's like, you know, can you come in, into my humidor and just smoke with me every day? And I'll just smoke your stuff, you know? <laughs> well, it's, yeah, you're sitting at the table at a restaurant, right. and the chef comes up, and he's got a little Italian accent. He comes out, hey, it was a pasta. And you're just like, oh, shit, this is real pasta. Right. All right, I'm for it. Right. It's even better pasta. Same right. thing. Same concept. It's better than that mac and cheese you've been having, right? <laughs> you got that right. Now, you got a Roma Craft over there? Is that what the one you had in your hands? That was that yep, catch yep, my Yeah, Roma Craft Neanderthal. From what I understand, it's a, a European release yeah. size of Neanderthal. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, uh, I haven't had a real heavy breakfast, so I'm not going to mess with this thing until lunch. Yeah. I had a Jericho Hill for breakfast by uh, Crown <laughs> The first thing in the morning, I'm like, oh, boy, this is going to hurt. <laughs> that's, that's a good start to a Friday, man. I, I commend you on that one. Yeah, it was good. You know what I mean? I remember um, I had the opportunity to have some of the black labels that have come off the factory. So you have to visit the factory in order to get it uh, there. And I remember them saying, make sure you eat on a full stomach. I'm like, I'm going to have this Monday morning. And they're like, no, you're not. I'm like, yeah, I will. I'll tag you in the post. And I actually, Monday morning, I came into work, had the uh, Misfit by the, the, it's called the Misfit. It's from the, the little punk rock band and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I actually had it in the morning on an empty stomach. And I was like, yeah, this is some, some, some strong. Yeah, of course it did. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, that's good stuff, you know? Um, let's, so getting beyond the rapid binder filler, I actually uh, thank you for elaborating on that. I really think that. You know, um, the Stoke Geeks listener and all the cigar enthusiasts who 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 are around really kind of needed to be reminded about that. You know what I mean? And more importantly, I I I, th- I think I personally needed to be reminded about that because I always get into business mode. Oh, you own a cigar company? We're going to marketing. We're going to we're going to brand recognition. We're going to product placement. You know, some sometimes I can't take out that that business excitement that I have, you know, because outside of Stoey Geeks, I do that for a living as well here. So it's like one of those things where like I truly get passionate of hearing a cl- a client's story and having them tell their story and then having them get more market share because they told the story. It's 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 good stuff. So Thank you for for for, for that. Um, no, I, and and I appreciate your and not to I won't mm. keep us on here too much, but I think we have to look at it responsibly as as cigar smokers, and it, if we can be able to keep our foot on home base, so to speak, so we can speak normal length. I mean, geek out between us, but if we can welcome more cigar smokers to to the culture as the who knows what happens with fda or whatever regulations are Mm. in place or becoming in place i think it we need more cigar smokers that are a part of the culture even if they're you know a weekend warrior or whatever 
but I think the best way to do that is not being not losing them in the weeds mm. and having like multiple layers we can get on and and really dig into the nerdy stuff. What do you do as 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 a shop owner who walks into your place, non-member, you know, so uh, a stranger who you know you never met this guy or girl before, and they're not shopping but they're shopping for themselves. What are some of your takeaways? Because I do think that that art is missing in the retail space, at least here in the Northeast. I mean, here in the Northeast, if there's six employees, I can only get my Bloody Mary on a Friday morning because that's the employee that makes the best Bloody Marys. You know what I mean? The other time, it's like, it's like, it's like, and it should be consistent. Like, you should be consistent. If I walk into the same cigar shop, I should have the same level of service. But that being said, right. well, take us through that and then how your family got started as well so That's, we can transition. It's a very good question. And first and foremost, and it's kind of the reason why I asked you, and it's something that is consistent through the family and the team, is if somebody walks in off the off of the street and it's their first time in, they're not a member, they're not – who knows what it is, we have to ask a question. You know, and that's where it's, you know, what's important to you as as a seasoned, very seasoned and established cigar smoker. I want to hear from you just as I want to hear from who's walking in. And it's it's funny because it is about the experience. So a lot of times and it's really interesting because we came across this question with one of our young guys who's here. His name's Ryan, just a fantastic young guy. Um, but every time we work together, we'll get four cigars, cut them, light them, smoke them at the same time. And that way we're just kind of bouncing off our palate and seeing what each one does to us. Mm. And it's interesting because you get into almost these philosophical questions and it introduced this question that we now use in the humidor often after we get into, you know, uh, you know, what do you usually smoke, which is answered with, I don't know, I haven't smoked or I smoke everything, which it gives us a good qualifier there. Yeah. yeah. But but then the follow up question is, where do you want the cigar to take you? Mm. Mm. And that <laughs> is a very interesting question because it could be I just wanted to, to ride alongside of me while I get some emails done. Or it could be I've had one hell of a day. I need to go away for a bit. Yeah. Or. And it gives us a really unique way to maneuver around because then we don't start thinking about, you know, okay, we should take him to Southern Draw, we should take him to Rome, or we should. It goes, okay, which cigar is going to take them where they want to take them? And then just shoot it through the filter of, okay, this is where you want to go at the end. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you usually smoke between here so that way we're putting them in something that may challenge their palate slightly? Sure. But it will match the experience that they're looking for. Yeah. And and that is that's something that's rewarding because you can check in and go, you know, not, hey, did you taste that chocolate I said you were gonna taste? It's did it take you where you said you wanted to go? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's it's a completely different experience. Let me tell you something. I know the weather's better in Texas, but if you came to Rhode Island and ran a shop like that, you'd freaking kill it. Because it's it's like, you know, it, 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 and believe me, I, I get a reputation, you know, uh, locally. Oh, you know, you don't like any shops. You don't like any states. No, I just, I just, you know, I always walk in here and I say, what's new? I want to know what's new from an industry perspective, not from a stogie geek's perspective. What's new? Because I don't, you know, I walk into a humidor that's got 700 facings. I don't want to take 20 minutes to go. And, and, and yeah. I usually take... Believe me, I'll go next door during business hours. But I want something different than what's in my human or here or whatever. I'll go next door and I'm, I sit there and I'm like, I'm like looking and looking. I'm like, man, I just spent ten minutes in this freaking human or. I mean, you could have told me what's new because if I could draw out on a napkin all the rows, I could probably get like at least a ninety of what's in the human or. Um, just by looking at it, because I've been in it mm -hmm. so many times, you know. And it's not a testament to next door. There are other cigar shops that that I frequent as well and i always ask well what's new I'm like oh we got you know and the ones that say have you tried this or i know you've tried this because i've watched story geeks but this is the other stick that they came out from the collaboration or whatever one of the mm -hmm. things i was in the shop this morning at 7 30 this morning uh, i stopped by and saw a cigar shop owner and um you know i, I just popped by and uh 
I said, what'd you got new? And he's like, oh, you know, we got the, uh, uh, it was the Caldwell, but it was the, the other collaboration, the Caldwell that went to the Connecticut side. So the one they did with Drew, the, the T. That that's not the farce, is it? No, no, no. I've had the farce as well. It's okay. a, I, I, I think it's the T off the top of my head. And, okay. and, 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 and they've done another blend with the collaboration. I was like, oh, cool. He's like, oh, we also got these. We got these. Boom. There you go. Grab the sticks. There you go. Out the door. Didn't smoke them there because I had to go to work. But I had just stopped by because I wanted to see the shop owner. And, you know, and, and, and because I know that if I went there today after work and ex employees working, what'd you get new? I don't know. <laughs> like, you that's, know what I mean? And it's like, okay, that's the difference between an $80 sale and a $10 sale. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, because I bought a bunch of sticks that I, 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 would, I either couldn't get or been on my uh rotation to consider or look into or whatever and that's the difference and and it's kind of crazy because uh, the retailers are missing that boat at least here if, in the northeast if i can be honest about it and and i i think it i need to say this i mean no ill will nor to run anyone's business down a, at all but i think if there were more shops that were more active on the floor and engaged in the not only the not the selling process, but just the education piece of it. You had more engaged employees, not only from in the humidor, but outside. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that the attention to detail goes outside of the humidor in making sure ashtrays are clean and people are taken care of and figuring out what are you smoking and do you like it? And the next time you come in, will I be able to get you into something that's maybe slightly different or maybe, you know, what can be done and I would like to see, I would really like to see more shops take that hands-on approach because mm. if somebody's smoking in their garage, they know nobody's going to bother them. Nobody's going to try to upsell them, you know, or their perception of being upsold because of whatever reason it may be. But if they go into a shop and have a poor experience because, you know, no one empties the ashtray or nobody knows what the hell they're talking about or xyz that makes it really difficult for us from a brick and mortar perspective and and it narrows that it really narrows it down if one shop pisses somebody off because they treat them disrespectfully it's very easy for them to just say well i'm not going to a shop then yeah oh I'll, I'll, I'll buy you know three dollar sticks online and and enjoy not being hassled or disrespected right right and and i think it goes to that whole experience and that is being able to educate your customers, I think, is one of, if not the most important step for any retailer, you know, nationally that has a lounge space or not. If you're selling cigars, you need to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You need to be educated. And you have to, honestly, Joe, if you don't give a shit about what you're selling, you got to get out. Yeah. Or yeah, you know, for if sure. you're doing this just to hang out. You're not doing anyone a favor. Yeah, for sure. And 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 before we get off the subject, I just want to say, in my experience here, uh, and with when I did the radio show as well, I love the fact that you take some sticks out, all the same, and you share the experience with your employees, all your workers, all your family. And we're gonna get into your family story in 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 there in a second, and um. You're the first one to say that, like you're huh. the first one to say to say, yeah. Well, we grab a stick, and we and we share our experiences with that. And I think that if the retailers did that, I think they would see um, more of a consistent, um, steady pace, not only in sales but in frequent flyers who would frequent their shop. And and I agree. and and I agree. and hats off to you. I think you did a great job elaborating that wrapper binder filler. What does it mean? Um, we could probably spend the rest of this segment on it for sure. Um, you, but let's talk about how your family got into the business and let's talk about w what brought you on the show is this shop exclusive and that's, what, and what that process was like. Cool. Yeah. That's, uh, and, and first, first and foremost, we're in the DFW area and there are, there are a lot of shops that do it right. Yeah. I mean, there's Michaels and Ulysses and, and Renegade. So there, there are a handful of really well put together and well ran shops. And we're just, we're, we're striving to be, to be one of them. But if we take a step to how we get started, it's a pretty cool story. And 
you, you've got to back it up a number of years to even when, when I have two younger brothers and I'll say this first and foremost, we, we are family on location. Our logo is a hexagon. The significance of that is there are six points of a hexagon. There's six members of our family total. Mm. It's been an integral piece and uh, of, of everything we do. And in the shop, we have hexagons everywhere because we thought, you know, if we're going to be a if we're going to be a business, it's easy to put up goals of what we want to do. But in the end of the day, it's easier to point at that icon and go, what you're doing right now is it what's best for the family, not mm-hmm. the family just being freaks, the family of the shop. Mm-hmm. Is, are you doing what's best for that? And, and that started, if we back it up to even being kids, like snooping around in my dad's closet and coming across a box of, of cigars. And my my younger brothers, they're about a year and a half younger than me, twin brothers, they, uh, you know, we'd find these cigars and then we'd act like we're cool, act like we're smoking them, and we're probably six and eight respectively. <laughs> and, and so we just knew, you know, my dad, he hasn't drank since we've been born and, and you know, been a real clean guy. And we knew cigars were what he did, so we wanted to be like our dad. He's a fantastic guy. Sure. And, we so you fast forward it until I'm 18 and and I'm buying cigars for my younger brothers, and <laughs> my dad's a fair but tough guy. But I wanted to make sure we that was like cool. We thought we were cool. We were smoking Don Diego Playboy series. I'll never forget. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> and, and so it was an interesting story. We were sitting out back one day and smoking cigars. My young my younger brothers were out there. The three of us were smoking. My dad walks outside and we put the cigars down like you can't smell a cigar from 14 miles away. Right, right, right. <laughs> he, he turns around, and goes back inside, and we thought, oh, yeah, you know, we're cool. We're, we got this under control. And then he comes back out about a minute later and he's got a box of Cubans, Monte Cristo <laughs> number twos. My favorite, if you listen to the show, it's my favorite Cuban, right? <laughs> mine too. And probably because of that experience. And sure. he said, all right, boys, look. If we're gonna do this, we, go, we get right. throw out that crap. Right? <laughs> throw you put that over there. You're, that's cute, but this is what we're doing now. And so he saw he showed us how to cut it, showed us how to toast the foot, how to light it, how to care for it, how to respect it. Mm. And the most important. Now that becomes a family ritual. It's something that we share together. And as we grew through our adolescence and teenage years into college, graduating into young professional lives, and as we continue. It was always that hour a day when we could come together and and see how everyone's doing. I knew how Nate was doing. I knew how my mom was doing. I knew how my brothers, my dad. And as we went through stressful and difficult times, we had our family there. Mm. And we, you know, and I think that's a, a testament to cigars is you don't talk about the weather for very long. You mm. get into real conversations very quick. Yeah, you do. And, and that's what we would do. And then I'll, it was, we actually have the photo of that day. We were sitting in, in the hot tub of my parents' house. It was May 11th, 2011. Mm. And we're sitting out there with my grandpa and we looked at each other and I think everyone had been thinking long enough and we said, well, let's do this. Nice. And yeah. no one said anything else. Everyone knew what that meant. Everyone yeah. knew was, okay, we need, to, we need to make a lounge happen. And that's when it started. Right. And then it started going you know, my younger brothers, one of them's a professional golfer, so he travels, and so we would kind of travel with him and go to different shops. The other one was a track and field um, collegiate athlete, so he traveled and went to different shops. And and I kind of bounced around for work, and so we got to see these shops. Who does it right? Who does things that we would not, we were just definitely not going to do? Mm-hmm. And we started compiling this. Then we started going to Nicaragua. Then we started knowing the brand owners, started working in the industry a little bit. And as we went through college, we started tailoring our majors and our studies around being those specific parts of the business. Nice. And, and so everyone, I think it's a point of longevity, is everyone has their side of ownership where it keeps us from kind of murdering each other, I think is the best way to put it. And... 
so as you continue to fast forward it it just became more and more less and less of a brainstorming of we should do this to lease negotiations we tried to buy one one lounge but it didn't work okay so let's back up and let's go through here and so it was just this patient and methodical process of really just building a shop and and listening and paying attention and then just delivering over a period of time what people said to do and not to do. And if you just do it patiently, we found that everyone will tell you how to run the business Mm -hmm. and and will give you the way that that will keep them coming back. And that's just what we're trying to do. And, and we're trying to align ourselves with the right people that we can trust and first and foremost, have a passion for the culture. Mm. You know, if it's about if if it's about the business, and the and the owner comes in or the rep comes in, talks about how, you know, they wanted to expand their portfolio and they like cigars, so they started a cigar company. It's probably not going to find a fit. Mm. And and delivering these products has turned into a super rewarding, I think, experience for us because we can go believe in everything in the humidor and we know that someone can come in they'll try a cigar for the first time that they probably haven't tried elsewhere and then they're going to come back because they might not be able to see it elsewhere sure and 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 i think that just backs all the way up to all the way you know back six years of planning was how are we going to develop something that's truly different that is not a standard cigar lounge Mm -hmm. and 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 so that that's kind of it in a nutshell that's awesome then you took it a step further and you have a shop exclusive how did that the process it, it introduced to the to, to the listeners i think we've the, teased long enough like this is a shop exclusive I interview it, right <laughs> yeah you know take, that's long take so, us through that process it is it's a perfect testament of developing the relationships mm-hmm. and we developed a relationship with the gentleman. It was their their original rep of Casa Torrent. Um, the gentleman's name is Guillermo. Uh, just a fantastic young guy. And they came out with this 1880. And it uses 8, 10, and 12-year-old tobacco, 12-year-old wrapper, San Andreas Maduro. And it's just a silky, beautiful. It's, it's rough around the edges. And, and it's got this character. And it's just so rustic. But it smokes so beautifully. And that we brought the Toros in. And Guillermo was in the shop. And we were smoking. We're like, you know what? You know what you should do? Why don't you go down, talk to the factory. Why don't you just make us some Lanceros? And then only make Lanceros for us. Mm. Just half-ass joking. I mean, there was no way it was real. Yeah. Fast forward it two weeks. And you have Edgar Hoya, the, the, one of the blenders. And I believe the master blender at Casa Charent, as well as One Shot, One Kill. And he walks in with a bag of 10 Lanceros. Mm. And he hands them to us, and we smoke them. Really thought, yeah, we're in. Yeah. I don't know what it takes to do this. but <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We're in. And we smoked it, and we said, okay, well, we'll do 70 boxes a start. We'll make them 10-count boxes. And then we started building my, my other kind of day job is I've got a, a branding firm uh, for local and family-owned businesses. And so my team created the sub brand mm-hmm. and it's actually kind of this day of the dead um, guy. And, and I'm sure the artwork is, it's all available to view, but we made this day of the dead kind of figurine and we, we named him Guillermo after, you know, the relationship. Mm-hmm. And so we did all these custom boxes around it, lasered them up and then put the story on the back side. Mm. And it's just a you know, family forever. And, and it's got all of our little six figurines, all Day of the Dead, uh, kind of Sugar Skull style. Nice. And, and so we did the packaging and sub-branding. And these things came in. And I've got to be honest, when they hit, we were shitting bricks. Mm. Because we have 700 cigars that are here. And I'm pretty sure they were good the last time we had them. But they better be good now because mm-hmm. we can't lie about it. Yeah. And yeah. if they're not good, I don't know what we're going to do. No, nah, I'm sure they'll be fine. You, you know today's Day of the Dead? Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, Today, that's and, crazy. Uh, yeah, that's a great point. No, <laughs> talk about talk about freaking them. luck. <laughs> that's that's it. But we we released them uh, Cinco de Mayo this year, mm-hmm. and since then we've gone through two rounds. We sold the first seven hundred in, in little under seven days, mm. and then we sold the second seven hundred 
in four hours. Mm. And and now we're in more production. So sure. December second will be we'll have more, but it's been a tremendous success and it is a seriously good cigar. Mm-hmm. December second is the is your release date for that? That is that's correct. Yeah, put put me down and, on the list. I wanna I wanna get a box of those for sure. Oh, you'll have you know. a box and what we'll do is we'll set up a special uh, a special link and a buy code to go out to any of the Stogie Geeks listeners okay. where we'll give you member price if you want to pre-order it. We'll shoot you that link, and then if you want to distribute it. Yeah, yeah. But all Stogie, Stogie Geek listeners will have first access to it, and if they want to buy a box, they'll get it at member price, and we'll throw you some swag. We've got some some really cool gear that comes along with it. Yeah. Uh, that's so awesome. yeah, just be it'd be our, yeah, our yeah. honor set, to get set, it to your set that up art wise and we'll do this does share and and get it out to our listeners and all that stuff uh, as we as we get closer to that. So December second, yeah. that's awesome. No, th- thank you. That'd be I I, I really think that a, a a bunch of of the listeners will hop on that because I know a lot of them love the shop exclusives. I mean, I get a we get a lot of um, shop exclusives sent here uh, for sure. Of, of 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 different shop owners that that want to you know tell their story and and then I always ask them, are you online? Well, no. I'm like, what? What are you? What are we gonna do? You know what I mean? You want you want to send a pigeon or something? Or you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. But it's kind of crazy. So, you know. Uh, let me ask you this: yeah. Who are some other shops? You know, other than other than Stogies, which is killing it with that H Town stuff. What what are some other shops that have good shop exclusives? Um. Uh, I know Havana Cigar Club next door has one with La Aurora um, there. Uh, there's also, it's not so much a, a shop exclusive, but there's a gentleman uh, by the name of Paul Joyle who has his Jay Grotto series. Now, one has nothing to do, he's owned a cigar shop for a while. It's not really a shop exclusive, but the shop owner happens to have a blend. I, I, notice, I notice it goes that way here in the Northeast more than shop exclusive. It's the shop owner has decided to do a blend. Uh, if they're smart about it, they'll throw it online and to expand their audience and then do that there. Uh, there's another gentleman um, by the name of Brian LeBeau from Church Hills who had did the La Prave. Uh, the La Prave was made at the, uh, ooh, I believe, I'm, I'm almost 100% in... in it, it came out of the um, uh, black label. Uh, the, the black label did it. That, that went well. Uh, then uh, the other one, the first one I mentioned at Havana was with La Aurora. The Jay Grotto was, came out uh, under his own. He did the Jay Grotto. He did the, the Jay Grotto and Vasario. And he did the uh, Jay Grotto Silk. The Jay Grotto original... In the silk came out um, of one factory. Uh, I do know the name. Uh, and then the other one um, was uh, with uh, Phil, uh, Phil Zangi um, as well. So we did that there with the uh, in the Jay Grotto Anniversario. Doing a Rolodex here. I think that's it for Rhode Island. Uh, I know that there's a couple in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is, is a tough state. Because the bordering states, Connecticut and Rhode Island, have a fifty cents cap tax on that, and mm-hmm. where every stick that's sold goes fifty cents, and it goes regardless of the price of the stick. And Massachusetts is stuck there in the middle with forty-two percent of the revenue of the stick. So there's not a oh. real, there's not a lot of creativity when it comes to the opportunities and whatnot. And that's why a lo- some of the mass um, cigar shops have moved like literally like just over the border. So, so you know, like like two minutes into the border into Rhode Island, they moved their shops and done some 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 stuff there. Uh, th- th- there's a couple of shop exclusives that go with the Regency here in Rhode Island, and I, I do know that that that's becoming um, more popular. But it's not so much as a shop exclusive set up the way you guys did it. It's oh, I'm the owner of this cigar shop, and I'm gonna use this for my shop exclusive. So, yeah, and, which I and guess I'm, I mean it's all marketing, right? Depends on how you want to be p- positioned, you know. So, yeah. And that's one thing that we're doing as well is we're working actually with um, Hendrick Kilner Jr. 
and Darren Chaffee of Principal Cigars and actually developing a house stick mm-hmm. and using our own, our own blend that is, it's awful. what a fun process to go through. But we want to find that balance. Can we find a shop exclusive of somebody else's magic and then create our own that we can kind of tweak and have fun with the blends on? And I think having that balance goes back to what you had spoken about, oh, Oh, 10 minutes or so, 10 minutes ago or so is, is going in somewhere and Hey, what's new or what can I not get somewhere else right. or what will I not see anywhere else? And that's for us, it's super cool. It's, yeah. it's cool working with these brands that, that you can actually talk to the decision maker and say, Hey, this is what we want to do. And they go, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. Yeah. You, you see a lot of that in South Florida. And then also if you go a little bit North to New Hampshire, there's a two guys smoke shop that, that also has a podcast as well. And, and they have a shop exclusive and they've actually gone even a little bit further and done their own brand um, of, of cigars and taking it that way as well. So two guys is United. Yeah. Yep. 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 We do our number one selling line in the humidor is Atabay. Oh yeah. Atabay yep. Byron. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and so we're, we're familiar with those guys and um, yeah, from what I understand two guys, I haven't been up there, but it sounds like they're killing it. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, we love their stuff. Yeah, uh, I've had uh, Adebay here on the show. Had that. Had the Byron. Huge fan of the Byron. Like I am, I, I am, I am a huge fan of the Byron for sure. Uh, I love the packaging. I love, I love the presentation. If you ever want to buy someone a gift, uh, Christmas is coming. Joe H. StoryGeeks. dot com. I'll give you my email. Uh, I'll give you my address. You know, <laughs> if you ever, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, uh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm just a fan. I love when you have the jar in there, and the, you know, the porcelain jar, and you just like, like when you have those on your desk at your disposable. Uh, it's, it's a good day for sure. It's, you know? it's amazing how well that porcelain jar ages cigars. Oh, of course, We've yeah. Taken, last year we took some uh, tat. Uh, monsters that came out last year mm. and the September ones that came to to the shop the ones that were produced in September were still a little green mm-hmm. we put those in the in the jars just to test it's it was fantastic a, a month in that jar and those things came out just perfect mm-hmm. it, it almost like supercharged the process yeah yeah I think it's to me uh, to, to compare it because I, I I love a lot of wine I love a lot of craft beer, and with the wine, you know how you have like the the decanter. I'm not talking about the actual one that you let sit. I'm talking about the one that you can pour and it just goes right through, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, to me, it acts like that. It'll it'll take it'll uh, a porcelain jar will take a six dollar cigar and make it be like a sixteen dollar cigar. You know what I mean? And and there, of course, there are some sixteen dollar cigars. There shouldn't be sixteen dollar cigars. That's another episode, I'm sure. That's right. <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> what is value? Yeah, yeah right, uh, right, right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, staying on topic, I want to end with craft and boutique cigars and that discussion. Yeah, you know, uh, in 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 there, and I, I I'm gonna let you introduce the segment because this is this, this is your gig here. Right. So, <laughs> well, I I appreciate it, but I think it's probably a shared vision both with with the two of us and with other far more reputable people that that uh, don't wear a red shirt. But the idea of coming around is, and we actually we've heard this from a couple craft owners, is we don't want to be a boutique company mm. because two assholes rolling cigars in a garage and and. Arizona could be a boutique company, but right. it doesn't mean they're good. And it mm. doesn't mean they're passionate for what they do. Mm. But very similar to the craft beer and, and craft distilleries and, and all of these smaller passion first, product first, process really driven companies, it is the craft of the cigar. Mm-hmm. And it matches, I believe, what we're talking about of the smaller companies better is, I mean, well, Roma Craft is one example of that. They really focus on the process and making sure it's put together. Atabe is a perfect example. 464 steps to make a, uh, an Atabe. Mm. That is crafting this beautiful, beautiful work of art that we end up getting to smoke and, and tell lies with. Mm. But 
the, I, I want to hear what your feet, what your thoughts are on calling it craft, not calling it boutique, and see if we can't start making some change here. Yeah, no, I've uh, like I said, you, 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 uh, as well as the previous uh, guest on Stogie Geeks, it was John from Crowned Heads, kind of corrected me when I came out with you know, yeah, well, you know, is a boutique is it not, and I'm like, well. You know, and, 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 and it was kind of like a takeaway, right? It was a takeaway from my conversation with you. It was certainly a takeaway from John from Crowned Heads last week. You can go to stogiegeeks.com uh, forward slash episode. No, stogiegeeks.com uh, forward slash 287. That was last week's show. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's like, you know, it, it's not even boutique. He even looked at me. He's like, Joe. He's like, it's not even boutique anymore, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that, that was literally like the way. And I was like, well, you know. It explain and 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 the way he explained it was it, for me it was a takeaway right every time I get to host a Stogie Geek show and I get to interview someone uh, there should be a takeaway right and it should be it's not only for me but it's definitely for the listeners which is why that they keep on engaging within the show and the takeaway is that you know the craft um, movement is is really here to stay just like I've always said in previous episodes the boutiques are here to stay. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, don't even call them boutiques anymore. Like, they're, they're, they're you know, it's not like it's insulting uh, to, to that. It's just, it's just, it truly is a craft. Premium cigars is a craft. And we, um, on Stogie Geeks, or you as a retailer, uh, and your employees and the enthusiast should really um, go out there and pay attention just a little bit more to the craft and whatever that smaller company is trying to accomplish. And it's one of those things where I'm a stubborn Italian kid. I'm going to have to get that the B word out of my head and really try to, you know, consume that when we interview someone and they happen to be a smaller company to, to not use that word and to really focus in on what they're doing as opposed to just throw them in the bucket as, oh, you haven't been around for 100 years? You go in this bucket. I'm trying, you know, and, 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 and again, that was my takeaway from when I was introduced to you uh, as well. And that was my takeaway from, from John. So the past three weeks of Stogie Geeks has been surrounded by that. And next week's interview is the same way. It was like one of those things where, you know, when, when I did the, the pre-screening call to, to introduce ourselves, I, I, you know, it was post my original call with you. And I, I avoided that word. And, and, and they, it's amazing how they, they were kind of like, wow, like, yeah, we're, this is what we do. And, and, and I think that if we pay attention a little bit more, it will certainly be a much better place for sure. And I also think that, you know, um, we can also, you know, we, we, we as consumers want to articulate something and, and, and put it in a folder in our brain, right? And so we do that by using a word that we've been using forever. And, uh, you know, maybe that word shouldn't exist anymore because it certainly doesn't do them ju uh, any type of justice. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And I think if you, if you say boutique, I think an easy little adjective to it is it's just a little boutique company yeah well it almost limits them in that what happens when they go out well i knew when they were a little boutique company but it, i think it does limit them within their growth that us as as retailers or as end results end users we should be excited for them to grow and and be behind them as they continue to grow and i think craft allows that ability mm -hmm. to and i think it i think you're right i yeah. think it it appropriately gives them their term of endearment and respect mm -hmm. and and we're not kind of demeaning right right and i think also and just before we wrap up i i think also when you use boutique it's like the methodology is a race to 250 sticks they go and get their 250 sticks market share and then they redo another 250 sticks and us as a consumer and maybe you as a retail is like oh, i hope it's as good as the next one. And I think it already puts that, it sets the expectation of the next 250 sticks are going to suck as opposed to that, as opposed to accept it. Like, hey, man, they harvested that three, four years ago or whatever timetable it took them to get through those sticks. It, it's going to be a different crop anyway because of the methodology of the craft and the harvest of the craft. 
And I think that if we smoke it with an open mind and not categorize it in our brains as we need to as consumers or you as a retailer and also a consumer, I think that um, uh, the, it would let the creativity component come out. I, I think you're exactly right. And and I don't know if you up, up in the Northeast, if you have principal cigars up there, but to talk on what you're saying principle what they do well darren chaffee is the guy who's kind of who's the owner of that but what he does with a series called the aviators is he every blend he has is in true acceptance of the fact this is a living being you know this it changes so much Mm -hmm. that you can't tell you can't make the exact same cigar and if you try to say you're making the exact same cigar it's, I think he puts it, it's a ridiculous pursuit. So he tries to tell the same story in the very best way he can. And that's what's cool from a continuous cigar smoker is you can walk in and you could have smoked everything in the humidor, but the new principles are in and it's it's so, it's slightly reblended. Yeah, it kind of moves it, to the top of the list for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it made me nervous to be honest. Yeah. I thought, oh shit, this thing's going to change. I don't know if it's going to be good. And then I smoked the first one. It was very apparent that they know what they're doing. So I trust any of that movement. Yeah. And and that's a cool thing. And I hope to see more more brands going that direction if that is is a viable option for for those companies. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, before we wrap up, um, I just want to say thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your story. Best of luck to you and your family. Stogie Geeks listeners, if you want to be on the top of the list for the email promotion that we're going to put out. All you got to do is email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Their shop exclusive is coming out uh, December 2nd. I will make sure that you get a specific email uh, for that, and we will uh, make sure that you have access to their membership pricing if you want to try their uh, shop exclusive. Brendan, best of luck to you and your family, and thank you for your time. Thank you. It was an honor. Thank you, everybody. Keep in touch. Well, that's, that's it for Stogie Geeks. We'll see you next time. Enjoy. <laughs>